Hi, I'm Plami, and in this episode of Ray Decay, I'm gonna be reacting to the second music video for ATS's recent comeback, with the music video being called Eternal Sunshine. And I'm actually pretty excited to get into uh, this song because, from what I've heard of it, uh, it's gonna be pretty different from what Deja Vu was. Um, and I'm curious which one of these two songs I'm going to like because, even though I like how different Deja Vu is from the typical 80s stuff, um, after listening to it as much as I have since the the song was released, um, I still pref think that the better song uh, that ATS released this year was definitely Fireworks. And I know that I still haven't checked out their uh, Kingdom Finale song, The Rio. Uh, I believe that's what it's called. But so far, I think Fireworks is gonna be ATS's song of the year for me. But there's still a possibility that maybe this song is gonna be really good and maybe it's gonna blow both Deja Vu and Fireworks out of the game. But I very much doubt that because uh, from what I know about this song, it's gonna be more of like something along the lines of what Wave was. Like it's gonna be more happy and um, I don't think it's gonna be cutesy, but it's definitely gonna be more happy and wholesome. So yeah. But whether that's the case, there's only one way to find out. So without further ado, let's get into the song in three, two, one. Man, this intro for me has become just like uh, what Big Hit's intro used to be. It's iconic. And again, you can clearly see which music video much more money were poured into. Which time is this where the music video with the obviously higher budget didn't win uh, being the title track? I think this is like the second or third time where that has happened. Okay, so in this one Mingi has a more prominent rap verse, I like that. And yeah, this one is still pretty different, just like Deja Vu. Okay. Ooh, I'm liking how it sounds here. I gotta say, this song is perfect for radio playing. It sounds like a song that I would hear on the radio. At least where I live. Okay, I'm really happy that the song is actually managing to surprise me in a couple ways. Okay, this one is definitely a bop. I like that. Yeah, halfway through the song I was actually worried that I wasn't gonna end up loving it, but I actually do really like it. Now I'm really curious to see uh, people's reactions to this song. Because this is very different, even from Wade. I love this sound in the phone in, in instrumental, it's so good. Hmm. 
Man, I'm really happy that this one turned out to be really good. Okay, I definitely found my thumbnail for this video. <laughs> okay, are there still more? They, they teased this sound in uh, Deja Vu as well, I'm pretty sure, but I, I think it was a little bit more major in that one. You know, if groups are gonna start pandering to American audiences more and have more radio-friendly songs and everything, I feel like this is the kind of way they should go about it. Because, like, this is still very much, as I said, radio-friendly. Um, it genuinely sounds like something that I would hear on the radio or that I hear on the radio uh, where I live whenever I listen to it, which is not common, but, like, this is the kind of stuff, the way the music on the, all those uh, radio channels sounds like. So, if a group is gonna do it, that's how they should do it. Because this is still sounds like very much an 80s song it has 80s vibe and everything and yes it is experimental even for 80s like it's something different but it still feels like 80s it's not like with bts where i never ha would have uh, even thought that bts would release something like dynamite or butter when i became a k-pop uh fan and especially a bts fan in 2016. to me that's completely different from bts and that's why i consider it kind of like a sellout but yeah, I actually really like this song. I really do. I think it's uh, really good. And um, I don't know if I would like it more than Deja Vu. I think at the end of the day, both songs are not going to be as good, in my opinion, as Fireworks were. Because that song just felt like it had more of an edge. And it obviously was a hard-hitting and rap-heavy song. So, of course, I'm going to like it more. But none of these two songs, Deja Vu and Eternal Sunshine, had death which is usually what i go for outside of the heart hitting songs i go for songs with death like for example a song that i feel like has depth to it and more specifically emotional depth that is definitely going to make my top uh 20 k-pop songs of 2021 video list is gonna be um txt's uh love song which feels very emotional and it feels like it has depth to it but neither of these songs, Deja Vu and Eternal Sunshine, really seem to have that. That doesn't mean they're bad songs, but that's one of the criteria that I'm going to have for that list. And I still like it and I still enjoy it. I really like how happy and uh, how much fun they're having in this video. But yeah, I'm also still going to be very much listening to this song. And maybe there's going to be some really banger uh, B-sides. Uh, in the album, which if you want to see me react to the album sooner rather than later, because I've been taking way too long with uh, all the types of videos that I do, so it's probably going to take a while for me to actually sit down and record that. Make sure to comment down below so I know there is a demand for a reaction for, to ADs, because that will make me do it sooner. But yeah, um, I guess without further ado, let's get into it uh, one more time as we usually do in 3 two, one. I really like the instrumental on this one. And their fucking uh, outfits in this video, I really like them. Especially Songhua. Songhua looks amazing in this one. Isn't this singing? Yeah, that was kind of singing. Man, that chorus is really high, I like it. Oh, 
Oh, that sounds so good. I love this part of the song, man. It's so good. Man, so far looks so good. Holy hell. I think Songhua especially looks really great, but also Honjo Kim looks really great as well. Honestly, the only one whose uh, look in this comeback that I don't like is uh, Sun. I just don't think that kind of haircut suits him. Hell yeah, get that screen time and lines. Beautiful. Man, I think most fans will and end, will ended up loving this song. Remember, seem to be having so much fun in this in this video. Okay, I'm not gonna watch this uh, ending part here because the song is over here. But yeah, um, you know one of the other reasons why uh, AT is doing a more radio-friendly or American-sounding song doesn't bother me the same way it does for BTS doing it. Because 80s have been like that from the start. Like, even from like their first album, a lot of their music, especially in the B-sides, uh, sounded very much like this. Like, it sounded radio-friendly. Like, it sounded like something I would hear on the radio. And that's one of the things that I liked about the B-sides, right off the bat. So, while with BTS, they started off with as a hip-hop heavy group. And even though I got into the group in 2016, that hip-hop uh, vibe was still there, in my opinion, in the music. And at this point, they've completely become a pop group, and that just bothers me. Changing from what you started off as, and from what I fell in love with, just bothers me. With 80s, I fell in love with what they started off as. But yeah, I don't want to really uh, talk much more about this, because I don't want the topic of the video to become this. I want the topic to be the song. And yeah, I like it. I like it even more. I'm, I'm just... So in love with that uh, part of the instrumental where it goes da -da 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 -da, da -da 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 -da. like you saw the part in which I fucking phoned over the song. It's just so good. I love it. That's by far my favorite part of the song. But in general, the chorus is really great and the vibe of the song with the music video is fine. I think overall I'm going to like this song. Like it's not gonna be a song that I skip whenever I'm listening to 80s, but it's not gonna be like one of my favorite or most played 80s songs and i honestly can't even tell you whether i like it more than deja vu i feel like they're maybe too different to even be compared in that regard because like this one is more happy and uh fun and more of a bop while deja vu while still not like a banger it's much more darker and edgier at least that's how he comes off like this one is more of a happy song uh while deja vu uh, as I actually said in the title of that uh, video reaction, it was more of a sexy song, so there was, there's that. Two directions that 80s hadn't gone to uh, until this point, so yeah. It was fun seeing them uh, try this thing. But in my opinion, I really hope that the next comeback, whenever uh, it happens, is going back to 
a hard hitting song again because like personally I don't mind group ex groups experimenting with their sound here and there but I still want to get from them what I first fell in love with and I fell in love with uh, 80s as rap heavy and hard hitting songs so at least I want one song like that per year from them but yeah um, in terms of a rating I think for this one I'm going to give it a 9.2 out of 10 again I think it's really good but I feel like it could have been uh, as good as Wave because Wave is probably the closest thing I could compare this song to in terms of 80s discography and it's better Wave is just better in my opinion uh, it's not quite as happy as this one because this one feels more laid back than that one but the vibes are close enough where I can compare them and I think Wave was just a better execution of a similar concept in a way. Well, well this one is still good, but it, there is room for, for improvement, you know? And as I said earlier, if you want me to react to 80s as most recent album or any music video or any other group says album make sure to comment it down below so i know there is a demand for a reaction to those things or alternatively you can go down in the description and click on the link to my patreon where by pledging your support at a specific tire you get to demand me to do a, a reaction to a music video or an album by your own choosing and the difference between uh, doing that and just commenting down in the description in the comments below, which you can still do, is that if you comment down in the comments, it's ultimately gonna be gonna be up to me whether I want to do that reaction uh, soon or at all. While if you go through my Patreon and subscribe at the specific tire, you get to demand me the reaction, which means I'm going to do it as soon as I see your request over there. But whichever way you want to do it, it's completely up to you. There's still a huge chance that I'm going to do the reaction if you comment it in the comments, so you should definitely at least try that out. And now, before we end this video, I just want to talk about something uh, to you guys very quickly, um, which some of you may or may have not noticed before or know about me, that being the fact that I am trans. And yes, this may come uh, as shocking, uh, to some of you because I don't really flaunt it that much on my channel, or at least I feel like I don't. Um, outside of like my K-pop reactions, which is where I feel like the most comfortable being myself like this. And yeah, I am in fact trans. Um, I'm not necessarily full on uh, male to female, but I heavily want to transition to being pretty female. I do consider myself more non-binary though or maybe gender fluid would be the best descriptor as well because I do have occasional moments where I feel fine being like just a normal guy but most of the time like right now I do feel very dysphoric. Um, and that's why I'm asking you guys for any help that you can give me because my situation right now I I don't really see any way out of outside of you guys' help because and this is gonna be kept short and concise I live with my parents they're never going to accept me as a trans person they, they just never will and as a matter of fact back when I started the YouTube channel I was actually kind of slightly starting my transition back then with like starting to grow out my hair um, I even got to DIY HRT, but because my parents started noticing certain things like uh, uh, my behavior had changed a lot and my clothes had changed a lot, I kind of had to stop doing that because they were constantly nagging me about cutting my hair and just started to kind of be threatening in a certain way and felt like they were ashamed of me and everything and that just kind of that kind of stress just tired me out to the point where I just gave up but as dysphoria goes it just doesn't go away you know I still feel like this and in fact it's somewhat been intensifying again recently so I just wanted to share this with you guys and again I would really appreciate any amount of support you can give me in regards to this because um, I just don't see any way out of this. 
because even if I mo uh, moved out of my parents' house and got my, myself a job and everything, that's just not gonna work for long-term uh, planning because once I transition, it's like I probably will not be able to get myself a job because my country is very transphobic, nobody gives a shit about LGBT people at all, so there's not even much I can do even in terms of transitioning here. So, yeah, I don't know. I just would appreciate any amount of support you can give me, uh, be it monetarily or in any way otherwise. And this is not about uh, boosting my channel or anything or guilt tripping you with my sob story. I just wanted to get this off my chest and make my subscribers aware of the situation that I am in and that I would appreciate anything that you guys can help me out with. It would mean literally everything. Like for example, uh, a friend that I made after starting this YouTube channel, my good friend Yuri, has been helping me out a lot. And I genuinely might have not been here if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him showing up and befriending me. So yeah, this just went a little bit longer than I, I intended, but I would just uh, really appreciate anything you can support me with. That's kind of ultimately what I'm trying to say. And yeah, um, before we end this video though, I just want to give a huge shout out to my currently one and only patron on Patreon, Omari Bridgman. If you want to join that person in supporting me, like I just said, you can go down in the description below and click on the link to my Patreon. Or alternatively, you can go to my Coffee account, which is also linked in the description below. And the difference between my Coffee account and my Patreon is that if you go on Coffee, uh, it's more for like a one-time donation kind of thing, similarly to Twitch where you just donate money to your favorite creators uh, while on Patreon, as I said, is more for like long-term support and getting benefits and perks for the money that you get. So whichever way you want to go is completely up to you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please leave a like, subscribe, also check out the description to my Twitter if you want to follow me over there and to my Wattpad where I post my stories because in addition to doing all these videos on my channel, I'm also a writer. And if you don't enjoy my stories or you simply enjoy my videos, like I just said, you can go down in the description below to my and click on the link to my Patreon or to my Coffee account where you can pledge your support and help with the channel going, help support me so I can keep writing the stories you enjoy. But if you don't want to do it, that's completely fine. You can still help me out in other ways like liking this video, subscribing to the channel and especially sharing this video with somebody who you think might enjoy it. And I think that's pretty much it for this video, so hopefully I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye!